Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back. It is Institutional here and I wanted to share another video. This is not going to be part of the SMC series, but it's going to be a part of how we take trades or how we backtest throughout the day and how you should be doing this every single day. So this is going to be called Daily Reflections and Backtesting as an SMC Trader. All right. So when we're done with the day, what we want to do is we want to look at the charts in terms of the sessions, right? So let's remove all drawings and let's start again with the sessions that we're supposed to be trading in. So I'm going to back test. I'm going to be talking to myself like if I was to be in the market, but having a reflection of the overall day. So here we are at eight. Here we are at 11, right? And this is basically the morning session. So we can go ahead and mark that down. This will be your morning session. All right. So we're going to have that right here. Now we can do an axis. We can go ahead and mark off now our afternoon session, which is from 13 o'clock. So 13, which is 1 p.m. all the way to 16, which is 4 p.m. Okay. Right there. And this will be now instead of morning session, this will be our afternoon session. All right. So we can have that there as well. We don't have to put it here. We just, let's just put it like this. Right. So we'll write right here. It will be morning session. And this line and in the other one we will understand that this is now afternoon session now another thing that you want to do is you want to mark off your 12 a.m open so where's our 12 a.m open it's going to be at 12 o'clock at midnight so here is our new york midnight open now what you want to do with today is understand what was price action telling us so if we really look at a dig deeper and understand what precision was turned on. So we can see that for the 12 a.m. open, right? We came down, we pushed up, we came down, we pushed up, we grabbed liquidity here and we pushed up, right? But here now it was the session that we were supposed to be traded in, right? This was not from 8 a.m. But from the price action that we had before, price was already hinting to us once we broke out of this structural point that we should have potentially been looking for shorts right so this gets used as a level to be looking for the longs now right now we can see how we dive right into that and we just tapped into that level where before they were selling now they're buying right so i myself i was actually looking for sales here right i was looking for sales here with us 500 and us 30 but let's look at dig deeper and see what actually happened here so what we do now is we dive in and try to back test this to see what happened throughout the day. So if we look at the M15 structure, first of all, we can see that over here we have our internal structure. And at the bottom, you also have our internal structure, right? So we have here both internals and here are externals. So what I saw was that price came up, it broke externally, I went down to the M5. And next, what I saw was I was looking for a tree to take over here. Right, I saw kind of a three drive pattern. We have one drive right here. So here we grab liquidity. We have two drives right here. Here we grab liquidity and we have the third drive right here. So here was the last liquidity grab. We have that three drive pattern that IC talks about on the 2022 mentorship. If you haven't watched that, make sure to watch that. Then I saw we had a displacement right here, right? Once I saw this displacement and this break of the swing low right here, right here's a candlestick. Here's two candles that are higher than this one. So this is a valid swing low point once we broke out of that higher and broke out of that lower here we had a displacement so what i was looking for on friday was for this area to get tapped into but now we look closer at the m2 time frame we broke below so here we have now a breaker block if you look at this candlestick this is the last up close candle before we grab the liquidity to the upside all that I did next was look at my fair value gap, which is here. Here we have a fair value gap. So this becomes our long-term high that I did not anticipate to be broken. And this becomes our intermediate term high or short term high, whatever you want to call it, that price lets us lower low. So we shouldn't be coming back up here if we're to continue with the bearish trend. So once price drops down, the price comes right back up at 930. And then it tags me in. My trade was like this. I had my shorts right here at the 50%. I had my stop loss right here and I had my take profit all the way down here. So I had a nice four to one and we were able to tag in all the way from two, 2.9 to one, right? Once I saw price come down over here, 
I put stops at break even and we got stopped out of break even. And then I was looking at it, essentially what I was looking for was this M5 right here to not be respected because if we look at it from this lens, then I thought that this rally gap will still be respected. And we can see how this, instead of being a bullish buy, it becomes an inducement. So just like me, there were other traders looking for this as a sell because we can see how we actually came back down. But once it did that, then it made sure to stop everybody else. So once we see things like this, now we have to understand, all right, we are in the wrong trend. So the better thing to do now, we're not going to be trading up here because if we look at it from this swing up higher, from this to this, we are not below equilibrium. So we have to keep on moving forward. Right? We have to keep looking for swing points that are above or below equilibrium. We're looking for the longs, right? So now... We took a break even and we took a loss today. So now understanding this, well, what could we have done better throughout the day? First of all, what we could have done better is look more at the 12 a.m. open and understand that price was already hinting to us that it wanted to go higher. Second of all, once we had this drop down and once you got stopped at a break even, we should have just let price do its thing because we can tell here that this looks more like a liquidity grab to go higher. So once we start getting these type of wicks right here, if we're not out of the trade, we should be out of it. And once we break above this, we should understand that our structural basis that we had as far as this breaker goes is now breaking. So we shouldn't be taking this trade anyway. That's what we should be learning throughout this day. Now, looking forward, all right, how can we have capitalized now from the midnight open? Because now we have shifted from a bullish trend to a bearish trend, right? From a bearish trend to a bullish trend for, from this intraday basis. So now what you do is go to the M15. And look at your structure points, okay? So what I saw next was that here, we can go ahead and take up the morning session trend. What you want to understand also is that whatever the morning session does, 90 or 80% of the time, we're going to get a continuation on the afternoon session trend. So this is where if you had a losing trend in your morning session, you were able to capitalize in the afternoon session, okay? But I was with my girlfriend, so I did not see this trade. But we're bad testing this for a reason, so we can have this in our journal you're supposed to do this every day every day when you're done trading you take out your recording tool and if you don't have a recording tool open up zoom record yourself see what you did wrong see what you did right and see what you can do better when you start doing this every single day you'll gain a better perspective of what you're supposed to do when you're actually looking at the charts in a real-time basis right so now what do we have for the morning trend we had a bullish trend so we understand now that most likely we will get a bearish trend for the after i mean sorry uh continuation for the afternoon session so we can go ahead and take this off and we can go ahead and mark off our ranges from our bullish trend so where is that gonna be it's gonna be right here right here's our internal here is our internal right now does price want to come back down here does it want to well not really because here we already grabbed the liquidity that we had to grab from this range so now we have to look at where could be the next level where price could reject and if we look to the left but what do we see here? We see a clean as day for value gap. And we also see, what is this candlestick, this up close candle? This is a breaker candle because this candle was the last up close candle to grab the liquidity from the bottom. So we can mark that off right here. Here is our fair value gap, right? Now, what I also have that I can't show you guys is in my other screen, I have two, or well, actually I can't show you guys, right? So let's go for it real quick. I have two screens right here but this is going to be in my other screen right and if you take a look at what's happening here this is a very powerful tool and this is why you should always have two screens right so this is on my laptop my main monitor is what i'm showing you guys now through um the zoom but i'm showing you guys now a little bit about how you could have seen this trade transpire on the afternoon session so on the morning channel we had a bullish trend afternoon session we had a retracement but overall we're bullish if we take a look at us 30 what can you see right here you can see that we came down and we actually grabbed liquidity right so here's what we can call smt if you don't know what smt is you can watch ict or you can watch my youtube channel i made a nice simple video about it a couple of videos before this one right so here we have a lower low and here we have a higher high so this right here is a crack in correlation. Here we have SMT divergence, right? Where US 500 is weaker than US 30, but this is hinting to us that price 
doesn't want to continue going down. Instead, it wants to go higher. So once we see this SMT forming right here, we can easily, right, easily take the trade right here. And we could have our stops right below our candlestick that made the Fair Valley gap. And we could be aiming for, if we're looking at structure, right? Well, where is the next value gap here? Because if we look at this, well, where is our discounts down here? And where's the premium up here? So we're looking for targets. We don't always need to reach above, right? I want you guys to memorize that as well. We don't always need to go above to the next external liquidity. We could still be shifting from an external basis, which is what we did here. You can see out here, we have a value gap and we have an up close candle. So this drop down is still valid. We are still relatively in a smaller bearish trend but overall for the day trend we were in a bullish trend right so it's mega confusing but again it's just how we can make it simple is looking at it like this here's our range right here is our premium so here we're looking for sales and here is our discount so here in the green box we're looking for buys when we're looking for targets right we're looking to buy here when we're looking for sales or we're looking to close our positions, we're looking to sell anywhere above these levels. What we're looking for now is imbalances where potentially price could reject. So if we look at it, here we have a breaker candle as well. Here we have an imbalance. So potentially this could be a level where you could be aiming for a target. So this would be a nice little three to one, right? And if you look at it up here, this could be a level you're looking for a target as well. And what would that be? That will also be, now it will be a, Five to one, right? So not bad. You don't need to be going for those extremes, seven to ones, eight to ones, 10 to ones, because price is not always going to do that. We already had a significant run to the upside in the morning session. So even if we're bullish, don't expect price to just keep on going and handing over free pips, especially on a Friday. So now let's take this off. But let's say now that you missed this trade, right? You're still reflecting, right? You're, this is hypothetical bellwether, understanding what you could have done better. So I myself, I, again, I wasn't looking at charts, but now I'm back testing it so I can see it the next time that it happens and I can have an idea of what I'm supposed to do. So now let's say we missed the SMT, but we have an idea that here we have SMT, right? So I can go ahead and mark that off. All I'm looking for now is some sort of displacement to let me know that price wants to go higher in smaller time frames. So let's drop down to the M5. Okay, well, what do we see in M5? We see that the price comes up and comes back down again. And then we have come up and we break out of this structure, right? Here, this swing high is this candlestick and this candlestick is lower than this one. And it also grabbed liquidity to the bottom. So this is valid. So this swing high is now broken to the upside. Now, what we have to look for in this price range is, is there a fair value gap that I can trade from on my time frame entry structures? If we look at the M5, is there anything here? from this push up right here that we had. Is there anything here? I don't have anything, right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drop down towards the M2. All right, if we look at the M2, here we have a cleaner displacement from this M15 for value gap that we had marked off, right? So now all I'm doing is looking at price so it can show me where we want to go towards next. We have the SMT, we have the morning session run, we already have the confirmation that price wants to go higher. So now what we look at it is, here is our fair value gap. Here is our imbalance. All I want to do now is capitalize from that. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that off right there. I'm going to go ahead and put that. My stop loss can be there below this order block down here. Here's an order block. This last down close candle led to the push up. So I can mark that off. Or it can be below the last candlestick that made the order block. I mean, that made the fair value gap, right? So now what I do is I traded the 50%. So here's our imbalance. I'll be looking at price to come down to 50%. I'll put my stop loss right here. How you guys can mark that off is I have a visual of it, but if you don't want to do that, you can just put it like this and you can see how you can just put it right there at the 50%. Majority of the time, fair value gaps fill at least at 50%. If it fills it completely, even better, but sometimes it won't do that. All right. But majority of the time, it will fit the 50%. So I marked that off. I'm going to have my stops right here below my order block. And I'm going to have my take profit. Like I said, I'm going to be looking for levels where potentially we could reject. So where is our, if we look now to the right, where is our premium above here? So where do we have a target? Here's target one, right? One, where is target two? If we look at it right here, 
here could be target two because here we have some nice trend on liquidity. So we won't be looking for that. We'll be looking for this to actually get broken into. So this could be a nice target to be aiming for. And then we could be looking at the top for target two. And the last target would be at the top where we have our internal range liquidity break, right? So our last target is up here. And what we'll do is we'll mark that off as target three. All right, so now let's look at as far as how do these targets align with our risk management. If we look at target one, we have a nice 1.85 to one. So not bad for a Friday. If we look at target two, we have a nice 3.42 to one. So almost a four to one. If we look at target three now, we have a decent 4.40 to one, right? So let's leave it at target two. And let's say that for whatever reason, you miss this target. Well, let's keep looking at price, right? So now you get triggered in here. You got basically no drawdown, maybe a little bit, but nothing scary where you're almost getting stopped out. You can tell that you're in the correct side of the trend once we get this push up. Now, target one, do we get any type of rejection here? We don't. At target two, do we get any rejection? We don't. But guess what? We get a nice displacement. Once we get this displacement here and price gives you equal lows right here, you can tell yourself, all right, I'm definitely in the wrong side of the trend. Right, I could start shifting now because we are reaching or we are approaching that 4 p.m. time where institutions or whatever you want to call it, algorithm, SMC traders are closing their positions. So all the longs they accumulated from the bottom here, once reaching this time frame, they're already closing. So this is what's called profit taking. So think about it like this. If institutions are closing their longs, now shorts are able to capitalize from it because there's no more longs that are pushing the market up. So now the sellers are coming in, right? So how you can see this is the market always gives you footprints. So what do we have here? We have equal lows and we have also an imbalance. So if we're looking at this and we were not able to close our trade, you don't want to close it just yet. You want to wait for, again, price to come up here. You look at the 50%, right? And all you do is put it right there. And once it reaches the 50%, you're out of the trade and you secure yourself a nice little three to one. Right? And you can see our price comes down breaks out of the equal lows so if you're a risky trader maybe you could call on that sell but it's not worth it right because price could just grab his liquidity and continue going higher all the way to target three but this is how you're able to back test start looking at the market from a bigger lens of things look at what price action has done you do this every single day and when you do this every single day like i said you'll start getting a better understanding of the market as far as fvgs goes ob's and what the market is essentially hinting towards right so yeah i hope you guys got a little bit from this video I will see you guys in the next one. I'll be doing these at least twice or three times a week so we can get, get a better understanding of it. And then we'll continue a series of shifting from retail to SMC. But this will be all for today. I will see you guys in the next one. Safe trading, guys. And that's care this week, okay? See you guys.